Again, so why is it a time of din? Why is it a time of judgment? It's a serious time. It's an introspective time. If we look at the months of the year, at the beginning of the months of the summer year, we see that there's Nisan, Iyar, and Sivan. These are three months. Nisan is Arias, is Tle. Sivan is Gemini, is Ta'imim. What's Iyar? Iyar is Taurus, which is the bull. So you have a sheep, a bull, and twins. <coughs> it's a good match. But what does this mean? In Nisan, like we spoke about in Nisan, Nisan is that it's the beginning of spring. You went through a hard winter. You were hibernating. You are being with yourself. Then all of a sudden the gift of the spring comes. And then all of a sudden you're given the, a new gift for life. A new lease in life. But the, re, the responsibility that you have in Nisan is like a sheep. You're just meekly receiving what is given to you. That's the energy of Nisan. And this one, that's why it's a miraculous month. We have to open ourselves to the miracle by just being present. Ear is the opposite side. Let's just think about it in terms of the season. Don't understand it in terms of this energy. In the winter, what happens in the winter? Generally, in the winter, people become more introverted, more with themselves. It turns darker earlier. It's colder. So people are generally more insular. Now, people hibernate more. What happens in the summer? In the summer, people start interacting more with people. So the first, let's say, turning between winter to summer is the first month of the spring, which is Nisan. So in the month of Nisan, you're ready to go out. But when you're ready to go out and have interaction with other people, you feel that there's a new gift that's given to you that you could go out. There's no aggression yet. It's almost like, we'll say, a child that's born, a young child, and it's given the gift of life. And that's why Nisan is also seen as birth. So your birth in Nisan. What happens on Iyar? Iyar is when you become strongly an individual. Sivan is when you become a mature individual. And let's, let's imagine this in three stages. The first stage that you have is pre-personal. The second stage that you have is personal. The third stage that you have is transpersonal. What does this mean? Pre-personal is like a child. When a child is born, they don't yet know that they exist separate from their parents. If you ever had a child, if you ever had a child, I'm sure you would see this, that children actually think everything in this world is an extension of them. Everyone's there to serve them. Everyone's an extension of them. They don't yet have a sense of personal. Then a young child starts observing, looks at the edge of his hands or her hands, and all of a sudden realizes that they have a body, a separate body and they have separate needs, and they become aggressively involved in themselves. Very stubborn, very connected to their toys, never want to give, never want to share with anyone else, right? And it's probably healthy in human development that a child should be very much understanding of who their ego is and what they want. This is a very individuated state, okay? Maturity, what is maturity is? Maturity is transpersonal. What is transpersonal? Transpersonal means if personal means that I know what I want, transpersonal means that I also know what you want. Pre-personal means I don't know what yet what I want, right? Personal means I know what I want. Transpersonal means I know that also what you want. That's maturity. Let's just imagine a different scheme in different ages. You're a kid, and then you finally become an adolescent. What do you do when you become an adolescent? You rebel. What do you rebel against? You say, I'm not an extension of my parents. I'm not an extension of my environment. They taught me this and taught me that, but that's what they were teaching me. What do I actually feel? What do I actually want? I want to find my own voice, right? You're finding your voice. You're going through adolescence. And as you're finding, you're finding your voice. Now, in finding your voice, if, you're not, if this is not done in a healthy way, then it becomes very aggressive and just about yourself. And basically, that's the image of a bull. You're, you run rampant. You have no boundaries. If you have mature emotions, or you mature, so you go from a personal stage to a transpersonal stage, which is, I know what I want. This is my desires. I don't necessarily want what my parents want from me. This is what I want. But I become mature enough to understand what they want from me. That's transpersonal. I can also understand that the other person is a person. Not that, oh, whatever my parents taught me is nonsense and has nothing to do. 
and I completely want to dis, 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 uh, discontinue this relationship. But you come to a, a higher understanding. That's really Sivan. Sivan is the Gemini. Gemini is twins, which means transpersonal. There is a one and there's a two. There's twins. So again, in stages of development, Nisan is birth and Iyar is becoming independent. Because Iyar is becoming independent, it's about gaining your voice. What is your particular voice? I want to say that it's not just a Kabbalistic construct, a Kabbalistic construct. It's actually something that we, actually, we experience. Because if in winter you're becoming more insular and you're becoming less connected with others, and then the beginning of the spring comes and you say, wow, I'm so good, I'm so happy, I want to spend time with a lot of other people, then you start feeling this need to start expressing yourself. Okay, what do I want? How, do I, how am I going to interact with other people? And you become aggressively independent of expressing your own individuality. The danger of that, this is a healthy thing on, in, 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 with the proper measure, the danger of that is then it becomes, all your interpersonal relationships become just very aggressive. So to counter that energy that occurs in the month of Iyar, you say that we learn Pirka Avas, we learn the ethics of our fathers. What do they deal with? They deal with interpersonal relationships. We, we do Sviris Omer, we count the Omer. We deal with Chesed of Chesed, Gvurah of Gvurah, we count the Omer. We're dealing with our emotions. Not the emotions the way they exist within ourself, but the emotions the way they exist with, in a relationship to other people. Because now we have to deal with ourselves, we're expressing ourselves, but we're making sure that this aggression does not turn into something that ru ruins all our relationship with other people. So Iyar is a very strong awareness of individuality. That's why it's also connected with Din. Rabbi Yeruchim, there's other early Rishonim who say, you're not allowed to take a haircut, because here is Din. Why is here Din? Here, on your head, is Din. Because it's individual strands. It has a very strong sense of individuality. It's together, it's grouped together as a bunch, but it's individuals. And here is connected with Din. Each individual strand of here is an independent strand. That's the idea of the consciousness of ear. The idea of ear is about finding this individual voice, finding this individuality. Where does the ear, the word ear come from? The word ear in pre-exile, which means before the Jews left Israel for the first time through Nebuchadnezzar, the month of ear was not called ear. It was called Chodesh Aziv, the month of light. Why? Again, because it's the beginning of the spring and the days are becoming longer and it's, and it's, it's light. Iyar is, is a post-exile name. It comes probably from the Canaanite word Ayura, which also means bright. So it's, the, it's related to the Hebrew word of Ziv. This is incidentally the reason that some commentators in the Talmud say that Iyar is connected with healing because the sun the sun brings healing, and since the day is it's spring and the sun is longer, so therefore it's connected with, din, uh, with, with healing. Now the Arizal says that the word ear, Aleph Yud, Yud Reish, is key. I am, Ani Hashem Rafecha, I am Hashem, your healer. That ear is connected with healing. Why is ear connected with healing? So there's a lot of, we're going to understand what this means, but the first thing that we have to take note is that ear is connected with healing because the mana, the man, when did the man start falling? The 15th day of Yudin. The Torah says that after 30 days they were able to eat the matzah, right? For 30 days. Correct. It lasted for 30 days. So 30... They had enough matzah to last for 30... That's what the Torah says. It's a passing in the Chumash. That it lasted the Torah for 30 days. So they had the 15th day. The Chassam Soifer says that... It, the, Tom, the Gemara says that a person can last with food, without food for 3 days. So 15, 16, 17. So what day did start, the, the man start falling? On the 18th, the Lagboimer. Wow. Oh, wow. So, so this is the calculation comes out that Lagboimer is when the, when the man starts falling. Okay, so let's get into the idea of healing. So you have the idea of, of man, but what is really connected with ear of Ani Hashem Refecha? So, general healing comes from the level of Arich. I just, I just want to give you a few words and then we'll understand what this is. Which also... Arach is, is Keter, is Keser. And it's, uh, the word ear is also numerically, Aleph Yud Yud Reish is, is, uh, is 200 and uh, 21, like Arach. So that's, that's what the, the, the Samach Tzedek says in Yaal Or, is connected with Ani Hashem Refecha. 
the, 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 the,